Welcome back to the Weedy Garden and uh, another episode here from the little garden on the hill. Hope you enjoyed the episode and hope you learned something because this one's um, about how to prune the citrus orchard for the very first time. So sit back and enjoy a little orange juice or something like that. Nice. See, this is not easy to do when you're um, when you're talking. Have you ever considered starting your own garden but mm. felt overwhelmed by the thought of it? Do you believe that gardening is too difficult, too time consuming, or just beyond your capabilities? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's time to challenge those beliefs and take action. Oh, this tastes delicious though. Gardening is not as daunting as it may seem. It's doable, it's rewarding, and it's an art waiting to be explored. Welcome to my food forest. It's been three years since I planted these trees, nurturing them with love and care. I gave them food to start with, like manure and compost and sawdust. But for three years, I've let them grow freely, untouched, and it's time to change. Today, I'm going to prune my food forest. Some may see it as simply trimming trees, but to me, it's so much more. It's like creating art with nature, helping these trees reach their full potential by shaping and trimming their branches. Just like my own beard. Imagine what it would look like if I hadn't trimmed it for three years. By pruning, I can keep it in check, maintain its health and bring out its best features. The same principle applies to our food forest. Pruning promotes healthier growth, better fruit production and overall vitality. It's incredible how a little effort and attention can make a world of difference. Gardening is not just about planting seeds and letting nature take its course. It's about actively participating in the growth and development of your plants, just as you would nurture your own body and your mind and your spirit. Growing your own food is not only good for the planet, it's good for your well-being too. The joy of witnessing your garden's transformation, the satisfaction of harvesting your own fresh produce and the connection you develop with nature is truly invaluable. It's a bit cold today here, a winter's morning, a winter's morning in the weedy garden. I've got my jumper on and my boots on, so some of you might not recognise me. I'm just going to show you how I'm going to prune my orchard, my citrus orchard. I've planted some pineapple here in between the trees, thinking I was doing a good thing, but as I realise as these trees are going to grow up, they're going to take the sun away from my little pineapples. So I'm going to pull my pineapples up before it's too late, and I'm going to put them over there in the sunshine. See, I've also got another pineapple, which is actually my first pineapple from the Weedy Garden. And this is the first pineapple that's ready to harvest. Yeah, that one, that first pineapple that tasted so delicious. But I chopped the top off it and I put it in a glass of water. And it's been sitting there probably for about two or three months now. And this is what it looks like, see? So I'm gonna pop that in the ground together with these other ones that I did the same thing with. It's time for change. And I'm gonna start with moving my pineapples here. The pineapple, I'll move the pineapple. See, I'm doing it the real. So this is permaculture inspired, by the way. Yeah, I'm not a permaculture purist in that sense. I use the permaculture principles of understanding nature and how I can help myself and nature but you know, if I've got free wood chips, I'm gonna put them on my garden. You know, if I've got to mow on my lawn or trim on my lawn, so it doesn't grow over everything and I can't get around and all the snakes are gonna come. See how big she is? Look at that. Lucky she didn't get hit with the machete. Whew. I'm gonna use the lawn mower. It's just the way I've gotta do it.
So I've moved my pineapples now, and, um, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a clean up, I think, clean the grass up around before I started getting into it. So I've got this magic trick that I learned when I was uh, in Denmark, all right? What you've got to do is you've got to get a fresh mandarin. I've got to do this a bit quick so we don't have the time going for you guys that are sitting watching. But it's a good thing to learn. So you get your mandarin peels. And what you've got to do is you've got to imagine that the grass has been like trimmed like the goats have been eating it. And then you throw that up and when it lands, <coughs> that's better. Okay, so now we're going to get to the nitty gritty, the pruning. And I reckon we just start up in the corner here. I'm going to just take these ones off to start off with. All right, and just chuck them back underneath. Anything that's facing in towards the plant, we don't want, because that's kind of going, going in. We don't want that one, so we'll chop that one off. And um, see, this one hasn't grown too much, but an important thing with a little thing like this is that they produce tons of flowers. And if they produce tons of flowers and all the flowers become fruit, then it's going to be way too heavy for this little tree. All right, so we've got to sacrifice all these little baby fruit. We've got to take all these ones off, so we'll just leave the biggest one. I'll leave that one. And it's one of the saddest things you have to do when you've got a food forest, and you see these little trees growing up and producing so much fruit. I'm just going to take a few more of those little lemons off this tree and, um, and just tidy that up a bit more. But otherwise, if there's no branches growing into it towards each other, I might just take this one off. So I'm just going to take out these flowers. Flowers. Any sort of leaf that's had a sort of a citrus leaf minor crawling on it. So any sort of thing that's damaged. I'm going to leave this one at the end. This nice big one at the end. But I'm going to take these home and make some tea out of that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful fragrance of citrus. And I'm going to leave these flowers to the bees because they're really loving it at the moment. I'm going to take this plastic off here. I can see it's choking the little plants, see? Oh, it's, like a, it's like a dog getting its collar off. Take that off as well, there we go. Oh, I can breathe again. I'll give it a little massage. Oh, it's going, oh, you beauty. You know, some people might see it as just pruning a tree, but when I look at that, I see that I'm creating art with nature. But I'm not finished yet. I'm still gonna give it some wood chips and some compost. It might seem complicated, but to make it a bit easier, you can think of the four Ds. If it's dead, you've got to take it away. If it's diseased, which means if it's been eaten by bugs, or if it's really infested by something, take it away. If it's dysfunctional, and that means if it's growing into the middle of the tree, or if it's growing down to the ground, or if it's just looking like it's in the wrong position, it's dysfunctional. Don't take that one away as well. And the last one is damaged. If it's damaged. If it's dead, diseased, dysfunctional, or damaged, yeah. So the four Ds, one, two, three, four Ds. And that's what I'm gonna think about when I go and attack these with my, with my secateurs. And when you come to pruning, you don't wanna rush things. It could take like half an hour or 40 minutes to prune a tree, or even just to look at it and figure out what you're gonna do before you prune it. Unless you've been walking around looking at it every day and you really know what you want, which I haven't. So I'm gonna just contemplate a little bit about how I'm gonna do this before I just get into it. Okay, this one, this one's dysfunctional. I can see that already, so I can kind of start with that. This one that's growing out here in the middle. You see this the one here that says it's growing up? We don't want it to grow up because when, it, when the citrus grows up, it wants to produce foliage. It doesn't want to produce fruit. It wants to produce fruit on the ones that are bending out, so I'm going to take that one. I would say that's a dysfunctional as well. See, the citrus leaf minor, it attacks the new leaves. It doesn't eat the old leaves. So I don't want to chop all the leaves off that have been eaten by the citrus leaf miner either because I don't want to take more than 20% of the tree. When I finish pruning, 
I want, if possible, to leave about 80% of the tree because we've got all those little solar panels to keep it going, all right? That's why it's not just a quick job. So I'm just going to chop off that one. See how it was growing inside? It opens up. This one's dysfunctional. Take it. This one here is going to just grow up and be also dysfunctional. This one growing up underneath here. We don't want that. I'm just going to sort of open it up a bit. You want to be able to when it grows up a bit, you want to be able to throw your hat through the middle and that'll be that area here. See this one? It sort of comes up here and grows down there. We call that dysfunctional. It's going to go. Alright. And then, see these three here? I want these to be my three main trunks. Alright, so I'm going to take off this little one here. And this one here. Alright. So now it's starting to look like a little tree, see? They've got this little thing you say about having a skirt, little skirt on it, which is, I guess, this little one here. So I'm going to leave that on, because when this grows next year and got fruit on it, then the fruit's going to hang down here, so the fruit will be hanging down just off the ground. But as the tree grows up a bit, it will get lifted up, but I'll, I'll see how we go. We don't want to take all the leaves off and all the branches off. So I'm going to have a look up the top now, see what's going to be going up the top here. Okay. See, these ones, dysfunctional means as well when they're growing over each other. See, there's, like, this one's growing under and this one's growing over and they're touching each other down here. They're rubbing down here. I'll take it off there. Oh. Okay. But we just don't want any of these dysfunctionals that are kind of growing in over the rest of the plant, see? See how it's opened it up already then like that? It's got room. Dysfunctional is coming up in the middle. Yeah, we'll probably get fruit off it for a couple of years before I have to take it off. It's a good idea to take them when they're little because then there's, there's like the, 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 the wound is a small wound and oh, it's easier to heal. It's not a big, like you're not chopping the whole arm off. See, that little one here coming up in the middle. You'd think that was dysfunctional, wouldn't you? Well, it kind of is, but I'm gonna leave it there because it'll give fruit in a year or two and it'll come up here and I'll grab its fruit and then I'll say, you're a bit dysfunctional and then I'll take it. So until then, it's happy. Okay, see, because I'm going to be walking past here with my wheelbarrow and stuff, I want this to be out of the swale. So I'm going to put a peg down. Okay. Dysfunctional. See here there's two, two growing over each other. And I've got a choice to make. I think I'll take the highest one. I think I'll leave the rest of the leaves so I can get a bit of photosynthesis and grow some new shoots next season. And it's got this little skirt, see? And then it's going to hang fruit down next year. It's a little bit clumpy up here still. Let's have a look up here. See that and there. We've got any more dysfunctionals in here? Who's not functioning? That one. So that's wants, it wants to grow up through the middle of the tree. I kind of don't want that one or that one either. See how it's opening up now? You can almost see through it. I think there's still a little bit more dysfunctional in here. I'd reckon we could take that. That one there has got a bit of gall wasp. See the gall wasp? That's a little gall wasp nest. I don't know if you can see that very well. But we'll chuck that in the compost. Okay, so we've got this little one here, which we call a damaged. It fits under the D category, which has got gall wasp. And it's these little wasps and they, they bore into the tree and they make their eggs in there and then when they hatch they dig their way out and they fly away. See? And I take all those parts off where we can see that happening. See, oranges don't all just come at once. You've got different times of the winter where your different oranges are ready. So if you want to have oranges like for a long period of time, then you can plant different sorts of oranges which fruit and are ready to harvest at different times of year. I can't tell you all the list of them, but I'm sure you can Google that one. So when you're setting up your food for us and you really like oranges, then you can plant like up to six, seven different varieties. So you've got oranges for a long period of time. So I've got citrus at different times of the year as well. I think I might take you dysfunctional. Uh, this mandarin tree I planted from a seed. I took a nice um, mandarin from the supermarket and uh, I ate it. And I thought, hmm, that tasted really nice. So I kept the seed and I put it in a little pot and I planted it and this is what it is. 
but then I heard like three days ago that you're not necessarily going to get the same <laughs> the same mandarin from that seed. But we'll see. I don't want to pull it out. It's like another one of those weedy garden experiments. It might be really nice. It might not. But I'm going to take all these bottom ones off here because I like it to have a nice trunk. We don't want it to grow up high and high because, like I said, the higher it gets, the more it wants to just grow and produce foliage. I'll take it back to there. It's very, very spiky, this one, so I've got to be careful. Then we're just looking for a couple of dysfunctionals. Who's a dysfunctional? You. I'd say dysfunctional. Well, it's, we want it to come up from the ground a little bit here. I think we'll leave the rest of it. At least it's not going to take off over our heads for the next couple of years. So there you go. Just remember, keep the skirt up. Keep their hat down. And they'll fruit out the sides so you can pick them before the cockatoos get them. This tree has produced so many limes and there's still so many limes on there. Check this out underneath here. All right, see there's a bit of that um, gall wasp. Where are we? See, there it is. Call that damaged because it's got gall wasp. See, that one's growing pretty high. I might take that one too, see? Like that. I'm just looking for the gall wasp's nest as well. And any leaves that have been like really beaten up by the um, citrus leaf miner. The citrus leaf miner comes back in the in the spring and starts eating the new growth, so I'll just make sure I give my spray with eco oil in the spring. Or dead. This one's growing up into itself. That off there, if I can, that dead stuff. There. Wow. Dysfunctional. This is another one of those ones that's planted from a seed, and they're going to grow really big. A little bonsai. That's my new tree. Okay. I call this forming the tree from its early life, so I get these leader branches out here, and I can sort of just say one, one, two, three. So I take these little side branches off as well, which is kind of that one. So take that one too. Bit of gall wasp. It's gonna, that'll do until next year. Okay. I know I talk about wood chips a lot, and you don't have to have the wood chips on the on the forest for it to be healthy and happy. But because I've got these wood chips for free, see. I want to try and give my plants the full potential. And the full potential is like lots of food. And if I've got lots of wood chips, then, um, then they're going to break down. It's like I keep saying about the, what the, what the tree is, is looking for is, is all the elements of the periodic table to make itself grow. And, um, and the, the mycelium and the, the, the bacteria and all the life that's in this stuff here, it helps break that down. It's like taking all the Lego blocks apart again so they can be reused by the plant. So eventually this just becomes food for the plant and uh, and if I've got it for free then I'm going to use it because I want the plants to get their full potential. Citrus are top feeders which means they're going to send their roots out on the top of the soil like that. So they're going to find their way through all this that's going to be broken down. See this stuff here, this stuff here that's plant food, but the plant can't eat it yet. It has to go through the microbes, it has to go through the, the fungi. The fungi breaks it down. And it's like little Lego blocks of minerals and, 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 and nutrients. And the, the fungi goes in and, 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 and basically it's like, takes those Lego blocks apart so it can be used for something else. Citrus plant. We want to keep the trunk free from the wood chips so it doesn't get too moist because otherwise it gets collar rot which means it gets rot inside the root and it, it'll die. All right, just before the sun goes down, I want to show the last little step of this operation today. I'm going to lay down some flowers, like I said before, some nasturtiums, which you can eat. You can eat the flowers, you can eat the leaves, and some marigolds as well. Both of them are going to attract the bees, which we love in the garden. I've got bees up there, so it's nice for them. Spread that out. And then just get my nasturtium. I'll 
take like eight or ten. I've got one, two, three, nine, ten, and two for good luck. Like that. And that's going to be a little little salad bar in a few months. And I'll chuck some marigolds down here. It's nice there. See, that's a nice little, little flower bed. We're going to put some more nasturtiums here. So put half here. Just take a look out. Okay, put half here. See, one, two, three. But they like to be planted in the ground to start with. And they are annuals, so they'll drop their seeds and come back again. So I encourage you to get connected and grow your own food. Start small if you need to. Embrace the process, learn as you go, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Gardening is a journey of discovery and self-expression. Remember, it all begins with taking the first step. You have the power to transform a patch of land into a thriving oasis. Gardening is not difficult, it's doable. Get out there and get your hands dirty, everybody, and let the magic of gardening unfold. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Beautiful, healthy, happy little citrus orchard. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.